This time we'll call the Monday, January 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Jackson County Board of Supervisors to order. Blair McDevitt, Mike Steinis, and myself, Jack Willie, are your supervisors. We have Lisa Smith and Bjorn Beth from the auditor's office, and Luann Goki, our administrative assistant. And as usual at our meetings, the first item on our agenda is David Dreyer. Morning. Morning, Morning David. Happy New Year. Same to you. Uh, first item on uh, my agenda is the uh, get the board's uh, approval permission to send out bid documents for our rock bids and then following, following schedule open at the board meeting on January 25th and award tentatively on February 1st. And all of the um, requirements and stuff have the, any anything changed? No, we have not changed anything. Okay. Yeah. A uh, motion on that? Yep. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, go out to bids for the rock. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And uh, item number two, you know, as we mentioned during the budget work session, we'd like to start the process of soliciting equipment quotes so that we can get into the manufacturing queue, hopefully, a little sooner and be ahead of the curve in that regards wouldn't uh, have any budget implications it's just starting the process sooner have we had any conversation with manufacturers as far as availability uh, not, not anything recently with respect to the issue with the, the trucks right uh, I think the graders are in a better position but it's the, the dumps trucks that are the challenge uh, I've heard some people say that it's starting to loosen up, but I don't know what Omicron that that's going to continue. If we'll still have those tight supply chain issues, but we just want to be able to, you know, hopefully get into the queue sooner and mm -hmm. less disruption that way. Good. Need a motion, mm -hmm. yeah, make that motion. I would second. The motion and a second to authorize the engineer to go out for equipment quotes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And then we have one entrance permit for Kevin Ambrosi uh, in Teddymore uh, Township, section number 35 on 308th Street, a business entrance on the south side of 308th Street. It's about a half mile west of the residential section of 308 right there off of. 52nd Highway 52. Uh, so that was reviewed by Roger for site distance, and we recommend approval of that. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the entrance <clears throat> permit for Kevin Ambrosi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And our final item is a memorandum of understanding with Clinton County for our paving project and surfacing. Of Z40 from the Clinton County, Jackson County line north to the city of Miles. Uh, Clinton County is doing their segment to the south. So we'll have one uh, contractor doing the, the work in Clinton plus Jackson. And this allows Clinton to administer this section <coughs> as the kind of general contractor owner. And then we would reimburse them for our share of the project with state dollars. How many miles was that? Pardon me? Three. How many miles? Point seven four. it says here. Is that correct? Yeah, it seems, that seems longer than that, but I'd, I'd have to look at that. I don't have to. I didn't make myself it says 3,914 3, feet or 0.74 miles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what, what are they looking at? Completion date? Is that 2022 20, or July, after July? Or? I think it's after July. It's in 23. Motion to approve. I would second. We have a motion and a second to approve the MOU with Clinton County. Any further discussion? Just say that it's 202000 is our part of it and it's saving us money by having them just keep going as we got the machines out there instead of us having another contract. Yeah, it just makes for a simpler Absolutely. project overall. So I guess when they bid that, then they just included that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Well, those are the only items I have. I don't know if you want to discuss any of the other complaints we have with respect to leisure lake road yeah. dust or do that after the meeting or whenever you want to do it. Uh, the crews were out this weekend and we spent about 10 hours yesterday cleaning up the storm. They were out Saturday hitting the paved roads for a period of time just to try to stay ahead of it and keep the roads clear. And they'll be working on it, you know, pushing back, clearing shoulders and things the remainder of the week. We just hope that people can be a little patient because it was a lot of snow and a lot of work has to be done and we have a lot of roads. Yeah. Yes, we do. All right. Thank Thanks, David. David. Okay. Um, she's on her way. Huh? She's on her way. Becky is? Okay. We'll recess till Becky gets here. The meeting and we're this time we'll reconvene the meeting and we're being joined by Becky Chapin, the human resource administrator to discuss impossible action on the COVID-19 vaccination policy. So I'll just turn it over to you, Becky, to Good go morning. through the- Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So happy I'm New Year. Yeah, happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> did you all have a chance to read the email last night that I sent out? I did yes, print I did. copies if you did not. So this is, it's a six page policy that is required by OSHA to be implemented on or before January 10th. Now we had, I was hopeful that the Sixth Circuit Court would put a stand on the vaccine, the mandatory vaccination testing policy. However, they upheld that OSHA does have the right to enforce or mitigate um, communicable spread of disease and all those kind of things. So, they, so the Sixth Circuit Court has said that OSHA has the right to implement the emergency standards. The Supreme Court is not going to hear it until January 7th. The policies have to be in place by so standard right now by January 10th, which is why we're discussing this today. This policy that is drafted is an OSHA template. It contains everything that needs to be in a policy in order to be compliant by that date. However, should the Supreme Court rule that we do need to comply, I would want to modify some of the sections as far as how we're going to handle the testing, what days it's going to be done, who it all applies to. I mean, we have the Board of Review that doesn't come here every day. It shouldn't apply to them. We have three township trustees that we have in payroll. So some of those things that we still need to figure out. Um, some of the departments that have employees that are not 100% vaccinated would need to have some input on how we're going to handle personnel decisions as far as disciplinary action and enforcement. So this is a policy that is up to code. It's what we need to have in place right now. Um, there would be modifications made, like I said, at Supreme Court rules that we do have to comply. And I would anticipate that if the Supreme Court does rule that, there will be further, further discussions, maybe lawsuits determining how this applies to local county governments. I mean, you as elected officials, I'm having a hard time understanding how they can say, if you're not vaccinated, you can't come here. I don't know, you know, but that's what it says right now is if you're an employee. Well, we need to protect their other yeah. workers too. Yeah. So there's no I home mean, rule no. ramifications in this anyhow, anyway. And no. who's going to enforce it? It's up to, well, OSHA enforces it, but it's up to us. So we don't get fined to make sure that we are following the guidelines of the standard. Now, the emergency temporary standard can only be valid for six months before they have to determine if it will become permanent. This started in November. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May. In May, we may be dealing with something completely different. It may go away. It may be enhanced upon. Um, so it's going to be a long process if the Supreme Court upholds it. So we have 109 employees that this notice got sent out to. I didn't send the to require inquire into their vaccination status. I did not send it to the Board of Review Township Clerks. Um, there was 11 of those because I didn't know if it applied to them when I sent this memo out, and it does, so I do need to get those out to them. But it was sent out to 109 employees, and of the return numbers, um, 79 have returned them, and of the 79 employees, 59% are vaccinated. So we have about 30 that need to come in yet this week to determine what their status is. We have about 12% of employment of employees right now that are unvaccinated, that if they chose not to vaccinate, we would have to mandate that they test weekly. You do have the option to not provide for the testing, you can, the law says they have to be vaccinated to come to work. We can add the provision that they can test by the standard every seven days in order to come to work, which is what most employers did. They haven't mandated. Some of the larger employees have, have or smaller employers have just mandated the vaccination because if they only had a couple of employees that were not vaccinated, 
it's easier to ask them to vaccinate than to maintain compliance through all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. We're at a pretty good percentage of unvaccinated, and I would not recommend going to a mandatory vaccination policy. You do have the right to do that if you don't want to offer the testing. Well, with the pines being what they are, I don't know. This would be, the, I mean, if it's a fourteen thousand dollar fine for not complying, that's pretty steep. Whether they pay it or if we pay it, or yeah. um, something to look at, I guess. Yeah. So once we get all the numbers in and we have one hundred percent return, it is required by law that we have their vaccination status on record. So we have to have one hundred percent return, which I will get the other thirty this week. Um, we can revisit and kind of go from there. Well, obviously, we need to get together with the department heads and discuss this. Yes. And when would be the earliest time that we could do that? Um, so we have a policy in place that meets the mandate right now, which is required by the 10th. Mm -hmm. So any time after that, we can make modifications to it. And the modifications would just be enhancements to put more in black and white what the actual repercussions or expectations are. Um, so really anytime I had anticipated visiting with each of the departments this week that were not 100% vaccinated. So I would have an idea of where we're going with this. Um, well, I think the department has certainly need to know the ramifications of what each individual might face or the county um, or department heads for that matter. Yeah. I mean, if they're responsible for that department, where does where does the fine come back to, and who who's responsible? Yeah, I think it's important that we discuss that with them and let them know what our feelings are, yeah. and then move forward. Because it, it just seems to me that it's right. it's almost it, it almost needs to be mandatory, but right. we need to discuss it. Yes, and I have three departments right now that I know are one hundred percent vaccinated. So um, there's some people that are just not going to have to worry as much as others, but. Yeah, it's it's really it's really stringent. It's really strict. They put a lot of responsibility back on the workforce, and unfortunately, we have to comply with it. So, yeah, most of the employees that reach back out to me have been very good about it. Some of them, obviously, not everybody agrees with being mandated to have to have this vaccine, and I understand that. The last one I heard was fourteen hundred people are dying a day. Yeah, I mean, let's get real. This has been going on for two years. Yeah, it's not going away. Yeah. It's, I mean, it seems like it's getting worse instead of better. So um, Sarah feels that OSHA or that uh, the Supreme Court will rule on this almost immediately, being they're not going to hear until Friday. She feels maybe Monday, the 10th or the 9th after that. Um, so it may be a, a real quick turnaround from the time the Supreme Court views it. It may not be, but she feels like they probably will rule on this fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. But again, this policy has to be, we have to be in compliance with this prior to the 10th. So if they don't rule by the 10th, um, we would be not compliant. So we'll work on it. Um, if you want to be involved in a department head meeting, if you want to schedule a meeting, if you just want, I'm going to talk to the departments either way because I need, once I get back to my office, I was gone all last week, I'll get the breakdown of the department. I will sort them out by department and determine. Well, I guess I personally would like to sit in on that so that we can have a, an exchange of conversation about the importance of, of getting vaccinated and can, what the ramifications might be for the county or the public. Right. So, I mean, whenever you want to have it, um, we've got a busy, kind of a busy Wednesday, but tomorrow there's nothing and I have just something on Thursday evening. Okay. And I was actually thinking maybe tomorrow afternoon, um, after maybe three o'clock-ish, get people through the lunch hours. Um, it's kind of what in my head I was thinking. Sending you can just let me know or that Luann know when she can email me. Okay. <coughs> Are you wanting to just have Jack or you want to use these well, meeting or if, we, if we do it at three o'clock in the afternoon, we have to do it. You're gonna to have to know today by three o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Is that possible? I was just going to have it at three o'clock tomorrow in the departments that could not be available. I would have to get with them independently. I feel like it's a pretty I mean it's either that or we've got I've got interviews all day Thursday with the sheriff's department. If you're busy Wednesday, I don't know how many I mean I get the feeling like that. We're going to have to. Be, the people that are not vaccinated yet don't want to be vaccinated. That's that's the way it is. And then it's just implementing to make sure that we're following the protocol with the masking and that they're getting here to test every seven days before reporting to work. Uh, I see. How, what kind of issues is that going to be? They're going to come here every Friday at three o'clock and get tested. 
if that's when family clinic can schedule us, that's where it will have to so be. So we're going to try to schedule a family clinic the same time every week. Correct. I think well, that's what you'd have to do. Yeah, yeah well, you can't rotate. You can, Otherwise, yeah. yeah, I don't think they'd be available to come here multiple times. And days. if they don't come in? Then they're not compliant. Then they're terminated? That's what needs to be decided. Well, that's what that says, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It okay, says disciplinary fine. action up to and including termination, of course. Yeah. You can give them three chances. I mean, that's just up for debate. And the, and the problem with this is where you have the elected officials that employ their employees. So if everybody's not on board with the same disciplinary actions, you're going to have, you know. So that's the need to, get, to hammer all of that out with each department that has employees underneath of them. Well, I'd say let's plan on the meetings more afternoon at 4 o'clock. And um, if Tuesday you two want to come, uh, we'll have Luann send out a, a notice that we're going to be meeting. And We'll do it then. If you're not going to be there, it's going to be a special meeting. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Well, they could be, they're not making, not necessarily. We're meetings. not making decisions. It's not a meeting, but they're it's all just like a department. It'd be a public meeting. notice or on their calendar. Anytime they're together at a meeting or a calendar. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So it's just a word. word It'd just session. be public notice that. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. have to let them know we're going to be meeting. That you don't think. Yeah. So that's up to you guys. So I'll go ahead and arrange that and I'll confirm it with Lou. And we won't be taking any action. We're just no. listening and trying yeah. to come up with what we need. But you need to take action. You're wanting action on this today as far as the policy. The way yeah. it is now, yes. And yes. then any modifications that come out of that meeting. We don't really have decision. much choice, do we? We do not. I, I mean, you can not you can, choice. <laughs> you <laughs> can not do this today, but this has to be approved by January 10th if the Supreme Court rules in favor of, of the standards. Well, the only way we can do it is if we had a special meeting at the end of the week. But there's no sense in, in not doing it because next Monday is the 10th. Unless you had a special meeting Monday, if they hadn't ruled, that'd be the only other. Of course, our concern doesn't are, make any difference. We have to comply to it either way. If they rule we don't, then it's null and void anyway, right? Right. So, I mean, we either do it now or have a special meeting. Why? Why would we have to have a special? I would make the motion that we. Um, not that I want to, by the way. Well, and here's the thing about this policy is that this is exactly as drafted by OSHA. Yeah. The things we did not put in there were the disciplinary action and the testing requirements that we need to determine. So this is what OSHA said we have to comply with. We can enhance upon this, which we will have to do. So this is directly from. Is that we as in the board? We as the county. I would yes. make the motion that we agree to the vaccination policy set forward by OSHA. I would second that with a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? All those in favor? I don't like it. <laughs> I agree. You know, and I agree. That's unfortunate that Close. we're tasked with this. Um, and Lisa, back to your question is comply is in the county. You're, you're responsible to comply. No, I, was, I didn't get the, uh, <laughs> What? I, didn't get I was going to say, if you make the motion, you really can't. I, 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 was like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> No, you can't. The person that makes the motion cannot vote against it. Any other discussion? Motion carried. Okay. What was your question, Becky? So you said who has to comply with this, as in the county? You as an elected official have to comply. Beth has to comply. The board has to comply. Okay. So is it the department heads that make the make these rules, or is it the board that makes the disciplinary rules? We're going to hopefully come up with agreed upon rules okay. and put them in this policy. As a you can't the problem with that is you can't treat anybody different as far as this goes. No. If you feel that you should treat your department your employees different than another elected official, that's going to be a problem. So then why have a meeting? So why have a meeting to discuss the disciplinary rules when I think because we I don't need feel to have like an exchange of ideas. ideas. Informational meeting to the it's, in, it's to get information as to how we all feel we can handle this. Like he said, if you Show, if you don't show up to get vaccinated, are you fired? That may be somebody's opinion. You may say, well, I'm going to give my employee to, until next week. To, you know, I'm going to give them another chance. So I don't know. That's the discussion. But in the meantime, they would be, have to be masked and all well, of that Well, in the stuff. meantime, they would probably yeah. have to be removed from the workplace. Mm -hmm. And then again, the question is, are they paid or unpaid? So there's just kind of, there's just conversation that needs to be had to make sure everybody's on the same page, well, but everybody will comply. There is provision in there for 
be in distance, right? I mean, no, that's not part of. I'll let you start with that. I mean, social distancing is still a, a very valid thing. Yes. Well, I'm talking about an employee that's in a truck by himself all day long. So they don't have to wear a mask when they're in a truck. Right. If I sit in my office with my door shut, I don't have to have a mask. The question is, Luann, if she's not in here with you guys, is she in an office by herself with the door shut? Can she put a mask on if somebody comes in? If she does not have a mask on and a social that walks in, are they going to say, no, 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 sweetheart, you should have had your mask on. Sarah Davenport could sit in her office with the door shut and not have to have a mask on at that point. Does her administrative assistant use a mask on in the open office? You just take your chance on what OSHA's compliance is going to be. Well, certainly our ventilation system not in compliance with keeping each each offer separate. Well, these are separate, though. Actually, they are. This is a separate unit. Where's from? There's not one big thing sucking it down in the basement and blowing it all over. Okay, the building, like a lot of buildings are. So that is a good thing. Yeah. So yeah, we'll try to get that coordinated, and like it, it'll just kind of be an input to make sure everybody's on the same page with how we can enforce this equally. And yeah. you can just let Louie and I let me you know if it's at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Yep. So the Supreme Court could do us a big favor. Yeah. Well, and I actually thought the Sixth Circuit Court would, and then if anybody else wanted to litigate that, it could go to the Supreme Court. But so the Fifth Circuit Court said, "No, you don't have the right to do this." The Sixth Circuit Court said, "Yeah, you do." So now we're. I don't know. So we'll get that scheduled. I'll get this out to everybody here when we get back to my office and then we'll just kind of start okay. the discussions on it in the event we have to. I didn't think we'd be this far with it. So thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Is Marty coming? He's on his way, but he'll be a little bit yet. So okay. So Elisa, do you want to do your business? I can. This morning, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the December 28th, 2021 board proceedings as written by Audrey Smith and authorize publication in the official newspapers. Motion to approve. Second. The motion is second to approve publication of the minutes of the meeting, previous meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Motion needed to approve and authorize the auditor's office to issue warrants in the publication of the claims listing in the amount of $143,792.66. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the claims. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Motion needed to approve a Class B beer license with living quarters, outdoor service, and Sunday sales to Preston Valley Golf at 42998 45th Street, Preston, effective February 1st, 2022 to January 31st, 2023. So moved. Second. The motion and a second to approve the Class B beer license. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Motion needed to approve resolution number 851-01-03-2022 to approve an operating transfer for $100,000 from the general basic O1000 fund to the capital projects jail fund, fund 33,002. So moved. Um, can you explain that a little bit too? We don't have any money in the capital projects jail fund and we need to transfer money over into that because we've had more expenses than anticipated. Okay. And this is part that will be reimbursed from the bond. Is that correct? If that's your decision, which we'll have further discussion on. Okay. I would second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. That's all that I have for the board today. You did skip over the visitors thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't think we, we have any. Mm -hmm. um, we have we a visitor. visitor here. Huh? We have a visitor. Well, we have a visitor, but <laughs> I don't know if she wants to say anything or not. Do you want to start yours, Luann, until... Um, <clears throat> Marty gets here and then we'll let him cut in. 
Fencing might be removing snow faces. This time we're joined by Luanne Golke, our administrative assistant. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Calendar for the week. We now have, um, for tomorrow, we have a three o'clock work session on the COVID-19 vaccination policy. Wednesday, January 5th at 9 a.m. is an RTA meeting. Um, and I believe it's only gonna be um, available by Zoom mm -hmm. for all of you. At 10 o'clock is the Eastern Iowa Tourism Association meeting in LeClaire and Mike is registered for that. Two o'clock Wednesday afternoon is Mississippi Valley Workforce CEO meeting in Muscatine for Jack. And at six o'clock that night is a 911 service board meeting for Mike. Thursday, January 6th at 6 p.m. will be the Jackson County Conference Board meeting. Um, the, next, uh, the next thing I have on the calendar is Monday, January 10th at 7.30 a.m. It's Early Childhood Iowa Executive Board um, in DeWitt or by Zoom for Jack. And our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, January 11th at 9 a.m. That afternoon will be a the Coconut River Watershed Management Authority executive meeting by Zoom for Larry. And at seven o'clock that night, the Jackson County Board of Health will be meeting in the community room in the basement. Did I also read that the conference board meeting is only Zoom? I did not see the invitation of the notice for the conference board, so that's possible. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it said. I was thinking I'm meeting with Larry after our meeting. I thought they wanted the ad hoc committee to meet, and that was going to be by Zoom. Larry's not there now, so we can't ask him. But um, but, but Jesse's there; know. she might know. But I was under the impression that the ad hoc committee was going to meet by Zoom. But maybe the full board is. I don't know. I thought I. I'm sorry, but I, I thought I read that that it was only Zoom. I can go and check when we get done. I'll go over and ask. Yeah, him. yeah you can go ask we Jesse need to know. Yep. I do believe when I was going through my emails, when I got to that, there was a, a Zoom form on the-, on I, I'm, the I'm sure if I look at the email, I even put it in my calendar that was Zoom only, so I don't- And I looked at the calendar and there's nothing reserved in terms of the community room downstairs. So then it must be Zoom. So it must be Zoom. I'll double check on that. All right, um, today, it's the first day of the first business day of the new calendar year, which means I have a whole stack of things to go through. Um, the first order of business um, is designating the official 2022 newspapers for the year, and all three papers, Makokota, Bellevue, and Preston, have requested to have requested that designation as official newspapers. I would move to approve that designation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, Sycamore Media for the Maculcata Sentinel Press and the Delder Herald Leader and the one from the Preston Times. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> okay. And um, Marty's here, so we'll... Come back to me? Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, at this time, we're joined by Marty Gudlick, our um, maintenance supervisor. Good morning. My apologies. I knew I was... How many snowmen have you built? <laughs> uh, none. I did read the agenda, but I thought it was, I didn't realize it was a, for today. So I apologize for being late. Um, a lot of snow, pushed a lot of snow. I got uh, best, uh, what do you want to call it? Pick up. Huh? There you go. Got that up for her. I get rid of the old wash machine uh, because it's no good. We're going to keep the dryer because <clears throat> it, it is good. Are you um, talking about at the jail? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, other than that, we had some issues with the dishwasher at the care facility. Is that correct? Yes. And was there a decision made on that yet? Well, I talked with Lisa, you know, the dishwasher that was in there, and correct me if I'm wrong, the dishwasher was in there when they had a full house back in the day. It's 20, 
I think uh, Jared told me it's 22 or 23 years old. And back then they had a full house. Right now they're only running 10 or 12 people in there. And we was wondering if maybe we couldn't downsize the dishwasher. And I think we should, I think it'd be- Well, they're never gonna be able to hold more than that because they have a limit on how many clients they can hold. And I think the most they can hold is 16. So I would think that a, a smaller unit would be adequate to meet that need. That's something I think we should look into because a new one that's like in there, Jared says it's, it's $16,000, mm. you know? And right now, to repair it, sixteen hundred, and a less than a year ago, we stuck two thousand in it for a new motor. So well, I would can buy a residential one for. I don't know if you can buy a residential it one. It has to be a commercial one, but you could get a smaller commercial. I think we need one like it's over in the jail where you put it in, and it. I would certainly does talk, that. I would talk okay. to to Matt and say, you know, is this going to be adequate to meet your needs? Yes. Um, because they can run it three times a day if they have to. Right. And it'd be a lot cheaper than the sixteen thousand. Right, I agree. We talked about whose responsibility this was too. Did we look into that? And that is a 50-50. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, so they, so they would probably be appreciative of a smaller unit too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll have to get. Are you going to talk to Matt then and see how they'd like to proceed? I will do that. Or Jared, or yeah. and if they have any questions, tell them to call me. I will do that too. I have a concern with the parking here. Can, can somebody direct everybody to park in, in one spot? It's a nightmare when there's a car parked here, a car parked here, and a car parked here trying to push snow. I talked to this jailer, the SAID, and I told him if he'd park butt up to the Penrose garage right in a row, that way I can just come right along in front of him and be done. But like this morning when I come in, I pushed snow yesterday, but I like to come in and clean it up. I got one car in the Penrose right out in the middle of nowhere. I got the van parked over here. And then I got one parked here right in the middle of the parking lot. And it just makes it a nightmare to push snow. Well, I thought Luann sent out a memo that no one was supposed to, no one was supposed to park in the parking lot. Here. He's talking about yeah. Penrose. He's talking about. Yeah, uh, I didn't you know what you're talking, talking about. Both. both. No, I haven't. If they could park, you know, the van, I don't know what that van is, the white van they have, they put it here, which is nice. If they could park their personal cars all in a row there, that way I can come in, I can go right up alongside of them and be done. But when there's a car here, a car there, I can't push straight in. I got to turn around and push it forward or back, drag it, and then push it out of the way. And then as they move over there, then I just go in with the Kubota and push it straight ahead as they leave. And it works, it works slick, but I can never get them to. What is that the transport van that's over there? Yes. The one they bought from Clinton County. Yeah. Yes. Is that down in the library parking lot or in the mm -hmm. county or the city parking lot? You can put it wherever you want. Okay. Is even there even something? there, it isn't bad where they got to park. It is if they would park their first. They used to park over here. Buck used to park over there, okay? So when I push snow here, I'd come in and push this side, then I'd call over, and then they'd come out and move over. And then all of a sudden, Andrew wanted to park over there uh, because of security or something. So Buck's cars are in, or not Buck, but the assessor's cars are in the city now. And then the sheriff moved everything he has over there. And and that's okay too, but they don't. They just park wherever, and it's if if they would line up, we will have a conversation because I made I told Buck they couldn't move, leave their cars over there. Yeah, because and that's for the people that work in the Penrose property. Right, we'll have to have another talk with Andrew. They're not supposed to be parking over there. Okay, well if they do, and if they back or pull into the garage, there. That's perfect because then I can come right along in front of them and clean it out and work good. Is it a, is it as simple as you having a conversation? If you park there, park here. I do. We have to relay that message to them, or can you just? Well, I talked to the jailer. Uh, what did when did it snow? When 
Tuesday, last Tuesday. 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 Yeah. And I talked to the jailer Wednesday morning, told him what that, and he goes, I'll let him know we're good. It lasted one day, and then, the, then they're parking everywhere again. And me and Lisa had that conversation we did. several times, and it lasts for a day, and then all of a sudden, they just park wherever they want. Well, you know what? Maybe we just have to have them towed away if they park there <laughs> and let them get the message that, you're not supposed to be there, and we've told you not to park there. Well, I'm just telling you, the way I carry on on my personal time, I'm not doing that to the sheriff. Did you, uh, <laughs> did just you, to be honest with you. Did you have a conversation with the sheriff, by the way? Not yet. All right. Well, that would be a place to start, Marty. Yep. I mean, he's in charge, and he, he sent out an email. And I'm sure you got it. We all got it. Yeah. And it was very deliberate to say where to park and where not to park. Yep. So I would have a conversation with the sheriff. And be on the same same page. And if that doesn't improve it, come back to us and we'll talk to the sheriff. Okay. And just on the little note, I lost a piece off of my uh, sander, so I'm going to have to get that. It's a kind of flat, so you can control the spread. Yeah. So I'm going to have to get one of them. I tried looking for it. Now I'm sure next spring, when the piles are gone, I'll find it. But I have to have it because otherwise it spreads it's all over all over the back of the truck that I like. Okay. And, and just for curiosity, did you blade the front sidewalk? Yeah. And? Well, it's good. But what I didn't quite understand is the city did everybody else's except for in front of the courthouse. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. I, but it don't bother me. Yeah, it works good. The 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 handicap ramp thing over here is a little tough. And they didn't put dirt back in where the monument is. And I fell into that. You know, when there's snow, you can't tell where you're going. Why they wouldn't have filled that up, I don't know. But they left it Is undone. Is that like a phone call to the city? Huh? They ask that question? Yeah. I don't know what day it was. I went down there, and the city pushed all their snow into the parking lot of the senior citizen building. So I had to move their snow before I could move my snow. And I did text Frank about that and told him that I don't know why he did that and don't do it. I told him it stops now. I have to clean up after them all the time. I really do. I don't know. They just, like last year, they blew all the, with the broom, blew all the slush and stuff into the Penrose yard. And it just, it. I think it basically killed the the grass in the springtime, all oh, the salt. All that salt. Yeah. Same wood. And they do it all the time. They'll take the broom, they come down by the jail, uh, in front of the jail, and then there's a pole there and they can't get through. So then they back out and go around. And I'll have my sidewalk clean and there'll be a pile of snow like that, about that wide, that I got to clean again. You know, I, I don't understand them. So you know, poles you not have a conversation with, with... I do, Frank. I It's like... It's like plugging the holes on there. You talk to him, he'll never call you back, never text you back. Well, you nothing. Might, we do have a new mayor now. Yeah. So maybe you should talk to Tom and say, hey, Tom, these are problems that I'm having yeah. with the city. Can you do anything to uh, alleviate those problems? Well, the last thing I did is I told uh, Frank, if he didn't take it, stop us, that I was going to the city council. And a lot of it's been cleaned up since then because it's just. Uh, yes, I would just say if you have problems, talk to Can I call you back, Billy? Thank you. I got my guy coming to look at the mm -hmm. brick on the or the stone on the building to get us. We're going to have to replace some stone on this building. On this building? Huh? I don't think it's stone. It's cement. It's stone. No, it's, <laughs> it's limestone. It's Indiana limestone on this building. It is. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, hopefully we're getting that taken care of. There's a sidewalk there. I'll clean it. And two minutes later, they go by the truck and plug it up again. So I'll go down and clean it again. And then I, you know, I don't know why they can't slow down and just push it over to the curb and, and leave it there. Okay. We certainly want to be good neighbors. So let's just see if we can have a civil conversation to correct some of these issues. We can't, we'll just have to go further. Then we'll go to the council and the right. new city administrator and wherever it needs to go. Okay. I'll I'll talk to the sheriff and see if he can get his guys. Do you do you not mind if they park next to the Penrose building? Is that okay if they there be two cars there or more? 
from the sheriff's department. It would work out better for us, for me. I'm looking out for me. Uh, if they park over there, then they do versus here in the in the courthouse. And then there's still plenty of parking over You're there. talking about over the weekend? During the day. Because there's still, on a full day, if they park there, there's still four empty lots in that parking lot. We told the jailers that they couldn't park in there, that that parking lot for the Penrose was for the Penrose Annex offices. Okay. See, I wasn't aware of that. I thought they were told to park over there. No. So no, that might be to. where the confusion yeah. is, too. Because I've been telling them park over there because it works <laughs> out better for me. <laughs> well, to push snow. I would, say, I would say for the weekends, yes, they can park over and there. And a night shift doesn't hurt either, would it? Yeah. No. Because they leave at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's just that that works with, yeah. with the Penrose property, there's there's so many employees there. Yep. And then if they have any clients that come to deal with issues, yeah. then there's no place for them to park. Because yeah. we just have the two out front, one handicapped and the one other one. Right. And sometimes the veterans fairs, they have a couple people. And sometimes Lynn has somebody. And sometimes I know the Department of Human Services isn't there all the time, but once in a while they're there. And so... We just want to make sure there's a place for those people to park if they come. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No, this is to have that discussion with Matt or Jerry, whoever we need to. I will do that. Yeah. All right. Yep. Have a good week. Thank you. you too. Okay. Now we'll be rejoined by Luann Goki, our administrative assistant. <laughs> All right, um, next piece of business, um, the, I think the board chair and the vice chair um, have been in place for a year. We usually set it for two years. Is there any desire to change positions at this point? Okay. Do um, you need action on that? Yes, you do. Okay. Okay, so... Jack's the chair, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And Larry's the vice chair, is that correct? Right. Okay. You, you and everybody's okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm fine. I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. A second. It's going to be a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Um, the next order of business is your committee and board assignments. I think I included a list yes. of those in there for you. Yes. So you um, if there's any changes, do we need to make any changes to that to those assignments? Otherwise, I need a motion to let them stand as they are. Yes. I guess we had a little discussion, but it sounds like you want to stay with workforce for a while. Yeah. They kind of want me to. Well, I think it makes logical logical if, if you know what's going on there and it's hard for somebody else to jump into that position. And I guess if it were completely settled, I would say let's change, but it's not settled. Well, it's the same with the mental health thing, uh, Lord, as far as that goes. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, there's changes coming, of course, so. Is there anything, Larry, that you would like to do differently? I'm okay with where I'm at. I, I'm, you, Mike? I'm also fine. Okay, then I would say yeah. let's make a motion to leave the uh, committee of assignments as are at the present time. I'd make a second. Or second that. I, I, I would make that motion. Okay. We have or a motion oh, and a second. <laughs> I have a motion. <laughs> motion. That's what I no, I can't. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. A couple of those assignments do have to be made by um, separate motion. So I'm looking for a motion um, to appoint to the Seventh Judicial Department of Corrections Board. Um, Larry, who is already in that position. So I'm looking for a motion to reappoint him to that position for another year. I would so move. I would second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. 
I also need a motion to make the Jackson County Economic Alliance appointments. Um, Jack right now is one of the supervisors representatives on that um, board and Ryan Kilberg is the other one. And he has agreed to be reappointed. Okay. Um, I talked, I had a talk with Dave a while back and Ryan, I mean, I think he's great, but he has missed several meetings. So, you know, I think that we need to have him there if he's going to have us reappoint him. So is so, there a policy in place as far as missing meetings? How many? You I think you can miss three, have three unexcused when you're at, send a letter saying either show up or you're done. Has that been done to you? Um, I don't think he's missed three in a row. He might get to two and then come to the next one. And then, but throughout the year, um, he's missed several. And so I just think I'll just talk to him. And I think the, actually, actually the board for the economic alliance should probably have a discussion or send him a letter to that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why Dave's talked to me because I'm chairman of that board. Yeah. So we'll appoint him and then he can make the decision as to whether he's going to be able to do it or not. Okay. Because when he's there, he's very, I mean, he's a great member, but you do have to have him there. Sometimes we, only a couple times we haven't had a quorum, but that's not very often. So my second question is you're willing to be appointed. Huh? My second question is you're willing to be on, on that appointment? Well, since I was just elected chairman, I probably should. <laughs> so I would move to approve the Jackson County Economic Alliance appointments as presented. I have a second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Thank and you. We do, we do have a work session with uh, Jennifer Mershande. Um, from the Ingle Agency to discuss insurance. And that's going to be there, it's supposed to be here at 10 o'clock. Um, and then following that, we'll be having our department budget work sessions again. And uh, I don't think any of us had any meetings last week for committees, um, probably not. So um, that would conclude after we get done with Jennifer, then we'll go into our department budget meetings. So. This time we'll recess till we're joined by Jennifer, and she, I guess she's bringing a couple people with her. Right. Is that just a work session? Can we just right? We're done with. We're just um, good agenda. Yeah, I guess we're not going to take any action. No. We're going to make some requests for us, but we have to decide whether we're going to make the let allow the request. So we, I guess, we can adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. We're still on. Mm -hmm. I would second that. We have a motion and a second to adjourn our meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried.